Welcome back to Smoky Ribs. I'm Russ Jones. Behind me, you're looking at the Biloxi Back Bay. The reason I'm down here at the Biloxi Back Bay is because of the recipes that I'm putting together today. It's uh, real classic recipes for this era. I was born and raised on it. I call it swamp food. We're gonna have alligator. I'm taking some alligator meat, gonna cut that into bite-sized pieces. We're having frog legs, fried frog legs, also white shrimp. White shrimp runs into these contributaries, bayous and bays this time of the year, and anybody can walk up with a braille neck, cast it out, and catch my bucket full of white shrimp real quick. In addition to that, of course, I'm making hush puppies. Down here in the south, you can't have fried seafood, or in this case, seafood swamp food. You can't have that without hush puppies. In addition to that, I'm also doing black and red fish. I'm also doing a blue crab bisque to top that red fish with. It's going to be good. It's going to be killer. Let's get busy. If you want to cook backyard barbecue till you get your feel, you come to the right place. Rest your smoky ribs. Smoky ribs. Smoky All right, we're going to start this easy, simple crab bisque by going in with one stick of salted butter. We're going to melt this down. All right, our butter is almost melted. What we're going to add in now is claw meat. This is from the blue crab. This is claw meat. This is the premium meat, in my opinion. We got one pound of that going in. Now we have the lump, the white crab meat from the same crab. Blue crab right here out of the Gulf of Mexico. This is fresh crab meat. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and season this with some Cajun seasoning. And what I'm using today is the frog bone all-purpose seasoning. We don't want to go real heavy with this. We got the salted butter. Now the, the condensed soups I'm going to be adding in this, they're already seasoned. So I'm saying probably about a teaspoon and a half should do it. Now what you want to put in is cream of mushroom. This is condensed cream of mushroom soup. Now I know y'all are used to seeing me make things from scratch, just like I did my gumbo recipe that's became really popular. I love cooking from scratch, but what I'm showing you here today is what most Southern people do, and really people all across the country. It makes it quick and easy with our busy lives and busy schedules, and it tastes fantastic. All right, now this is cream of shrimp condensed one more this is cream of celery i'm making this before anything else because i can uh, go ahead and cook this put a top on it and bring it back up to temperature a little later when when we actually utilize it as a topping for a black and red fish all right so this soup is condensed what i'm doing now is adding water i'm going to go in with two cans of water and we're going to add in one can of half and half Now what you want to add in is one capful of the Zatarans. This is a concentrated shrimp and crab boil. One capful. Going to give all this a really good stir. Get a good mix on it. We're going to let this come up to temperature. Final ingredient is one can of cream corn. I'm going to bring this up to a simmer. I'm going to let it reduce slightly. Not much at all. It's already got a pretty good thickness to it. It's going to be really good on this black and red fish. You should smell this. So we're not quite up to a simmer, but I was warm enough to do a taste test. And man, it is so good. You're not going to believe the flavor from this. But I am going to add in just a little bit more of this Cajun seasoning, probably about another teaspoon. So we have reduced down, not much. We've been reducing about 10 minutes. Got this to a real low simmer. I'm going to take some green onions. We're just going to throw them here on top. Give it a good mix. I'm gonna turn the fire off. All right, anybody that's been following me for a while have seen me do fried shrimp at some point or another. And all I use for fried shrimp is simply self rising flour. And from there, all I do is add in a Cajun seasoning. Probably gonna go in about two and a half tablespoons. All right, so I blend all this in really well. Now. I'm using this strictly on a fried shrimp because I love the texture it gives it. It's very restaurant quality. Now this is what you'll see me using on the frog legs and the alligator. 
very good on fish. This is one of the local products that I, we, I've seen it all my life. Let me put it like that. It's been around forever. It's hard to beat. So why not just use that? It doesn't cost much and has a fantastic result. All right, now we're getting ready to put a hush puppy recipe together. Make the batter for that. All right, so I'm making actually my second batch of hush puppy mix. I'm scraping down the sides from the first batch. But what I have in here is three quarter cup of buttermilk. Into that, we're going to add three eggs. All right, so I'm going to whisk this in real well before we continue on with the other ingredients. All right, I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of garlic powder, about a tablespoon of onion powder. Give this a good mix. I'm going to go in about a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. One quarter cup all-purpose flour. Now here is a familiar product I'm sure you've all seen, Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix. One whole box, this is a uh, three, no it's an 8.5 ounce, I think that's the only way it comes. It's the only way I've ever seen it. Pour the entire box in, 8.5 ounces. Give all this a good mix. You can add whatever you like, jalapenos, you can add corn in here. I like green onions. I also like the ones with jalapenos. I just mix it up from time to time. Just mix these in. What we have here are some very nice fillets of redfish. This is like one of our most sought after fish down here on the uh, coast. Now these are extra big fillets, which tells me this is one good size redfish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna portion these out. We're gonna cut these fillets in half. I've got to bring these up to room temperature because we're doing a blackening method and blackening goes really, really fast. You don't want a cold center on this fish to where it's not gonna be completely done. You want it flaky, but moist. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this alligator meat and the frog legs. And like I showed earlier, I'm using this fish fry by Zatarans. All right, so we're just going to simply take some of these chunks. We're going to bread them up. This is the alligator. This comes from the tail section of an alligator. They're very prevalent in our area, as well as Louisiana and Florida. I'm sure Alabama's got their share as well. By the way, I waited for my oil to get up to 325. It's now close to 350. And so we're going to be monitoring that and try to hold it around 350. All right, now I'm frying these on the Cajun Rocket Pot four-way fryer. This thing is really an awesome fryer. In actuality, it's a pasta pot that's been converted to, that's been converted to a fryer. All right, my temperature so far is holding steady. Let's go ahead with a few of these frog legs. Those are kind of small frog legs from what I'm used to, but uh, hey, they'll still eat. Still holding at 350, man. This thing is holding like a champ. Oh yeah, those are, those are looking good. Let's go just about another 30 seconds on those. They are done. When they start floating, don't go any further. You'll dry them out. I'll let them sit there and drain for a second.
So here we go with the shrimp. We're going to dip them in water. Put it with a little flour, knock off the excess, dip it back in water, flour it again, into the hot oil. Now we're gonna go in with some hush puppies. Just take your two spoons. That's all there is to it. Now these brown up awful fast, so you gotta keep an eye on them. All right, so here's our redfish fillets. And this is how you blacken redfish. Before I get into it though, I wanna explain real quick. This man right here, Chef Paul Perdome, he invented, invented this recipe in the year 1980, and it became so viral and so popular that there was actually a shortage of redfish in our Gulf here. Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, that's when they had to enact limits, size limits and limits per person, per day. And uh, to this very day, it's still intact like that. So he developed this, and from that, uh, a lot of dishes began like blackened steak, blackened catfish, but it all began with this recipe right here. First off, you don't want your meat to really be over three quarters of an inch thick. We got about a half on these fillets, really nice fillets. You want to start by dredging this in melted butter. Remove your fillet. You want to take his blackened redfish magic and you just want to apply this like you would salt and pepper. You don't want to put a heavy rub like you would on ribs or pulled pork, anything like that. Just like salt and pepper. This butter is going to go on a very intense hot iron surface. In this case, I'm using a mojo griddle. And it creates a barrier between the, the hot still and actual fish. I mean, it's really searing hot. It's almost dancing. It's going to be so hot. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these done and we'll be back. I'll meet you at the Mojo Griddle. Start with a couple of fillets here. Now this spice blend that Paul Perdon put together for black and redfish has actually been around since he invented this recipe. We're going to go about another minute and a half. And we're going to flip these over. Let's see what kind of temperature we're running. That's 530 degrees right here. There's temperature. That's right at five here. Not so hot over here. All right, let's flip them over. See what we got. Oh yeah, man, beautiful. That's what you want right there. That That is beautiful. Yes, sir. I wish you could smell this right now. Th this is incredible. What a fantastic recipe. I tell you what, there ain't much better than this black and red fish. And just wait until I put that blue crab bisque on top of it. Perfect. Bone Reaper, brand new product from Frog Bone. This is made with a Carolina Reaper, and yes, it is hot, but ooh, it's got a good taste. It's gonna flavor the sauce up really well. Just gotta be very careful and use sparingly. That's about, well, yep, yeah, that's all I'm using. Now give this a good mix. I have done this since I was a child. We used to go into seafood restaurants up and down the coast here in Biloxi and I'd always conjure this up. It almost turns into like a rumelade sauce, a spicy rumelade. 
right, the first thing I want to dive into is this black and red fish with this crab bisque. Man, this is going to be fun. Mm. Mm. That, that's pure heaven. I ain't lying. You have got to try this. That, that's got some unreal flavor. Excellent. I think we all know what shrimp tastes like. To keep this video a little bit short, I'm going to take a piece of this alligator, dip it in my famous little homemade rumelade that I just whipped up. All right, alligator is going to surprise you. It does not have a fishy taste at all. To me, it resembles somewhere between chicken and pork. It kind of has a texture of pork, but somewhere in between. It's not fishy at all. It's actually really good. And frog legs. Now, these are some little miniature frog legs, but man, they're good. No, they don't taste like chicken. They taste like bullfrog. All right, that's about it. Everything a success. Hope you give it all a try. We'll have the recipes uploaded real soon to the uh, www.smokeribs.com website. Until next time, smoke your ribs.